Okay guys, it's TJ Air part two. We're gonna see if we can possibly finish up the air conditioning on the old Jeep TJ today. I've got all my parts in and possibly at the end of this video, my air conditioning should be blowing cool. That's if everything goes well. If it don't, I might have to order an, another evaporator. So anyway, let's get started. So I don't have the air conditioning line tool to take these pieces out, but I saw a guy on YouTube that made his own tool and he made it out of a hose clamp. And what you do is you, uh, you fit it around the pipe. Let me see here. Like that right there. And then you will collapse it and it will fit up in behind this and then it will compress that spring and you can pull this off. Let me get this collapsed and up behind this piece right here. I can't do it with one hand. Uh, when you get it in there, it will hold itself in place and then I'll come back. I got the hose clamp in position. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to push on the hose clamp this direction and see if I can get this to pop off. Just like that right there. So what it does is it pushes the spring off of this lip right here away from it. And so let me get this other one off. So I saw that on YouTube. I don't know the guy's name. I can't remember. I can't find the video. But anyway, that worked very well. Whoever you were, thank you very much.
Okay guys, I've got all my lines ran, but I've not got this bottom one right here to snap in just yet. If I put enough pressure on it, it tries to push the pipe inside. So I've got this wrench here trying to hold it out and I still can't seem to get it. So anyway, I'll come back when I get all that clipped in. All right, I end up getting that line snapped into place and I had to take the spring out of the inside of the condenser and stretch it, make it bigger because this line would not push past that spring. It was too small. So anyway, I got it snapped in there good and it won't come loose. As of right now, I've got my borrowed gauges uh, hooked to the air compressor. This is the high pressure side right here. This is the low pressure side. I've got it pulling a vacuum. The vacuum pump is turned off and it's holding steady at uh, just over 30 inches of mercury, which is great. That means my evaporator core is not leaking. I'm gonna let it sit here for about 20 more minutes and then I'm gonna cut the vacuum pump back on and actually pull a vacuum and let the pump run for a while to make sure there's no moisture in the system. And once I complete that, I will start trying to uh, charge it up with a Freon and hopefully all these plugs and things will work and it'll cut on. So that's my next concern now is if I, if I flip the switch on inside and nothing uh, recognizes that I've hooked all this stuff up. So anyway, time will tell. I'm gonna keep letting this vacuum run right now. Uh, well, it's actually not running. I'm, I'm gonna let the system hold vacuum and then once I realize it's not leaking at all, which it hasn't uh, for about 30 minutes, uh, it's, it's not going to leak. So my evaporator core is good, and I'm tickled with that. So the only thing I didn't do that I was thinking about doing, I did not flush it out. So side effect of that was this line right here that was so hard to get on. It has an orifice in it that actually is a, uh, it's a filter and it catches all the debris and it would stop that orifice up. So maybe it's clean on the inside. It, it looked pretty clean looking up in the hose. So anyway, all right, I'm rambling. I'm gonna get off here. I'll come back when I cut the, the vacuum pump on and we'll pull the vacuum on it. And then after that, I will juice it up with Freon. Okay, guys, been quite a while now and I don't know if you can see that but it's still showing a little bit over 30 inches of mercury which means that's exactly where it was at while ago which also means it's not leaking so now it's time for me to put the vacuum back on it with the pump running now this is a little pump that I have borrowed from my friend he made this uh, out of something I don't know it's got a little electric motor on it thing is super quiet uh, let me plug it in So that's it. I'm gonna open my valves back up. So the pump actually is pumping against the system and not just this closed valve here. And we're supposed to let that run now for about an hour. So after an hour, I'll come back and shut all these valves off, shut the pump off, take this line off that's got the vacuum on it, put my Freon line on it, and juice her up. So I'll be back in about an hour. All right, I got a little bit excited and got ahead of myself, and before I realized that I was putting the can of Freon in, and the compressor is kicking on and off, it's working good. And it's getting cool on the inside. This is only my first can. So I'm about ready to uh, hook up the second can and get it going also. All right, so I've got the air done. I've got my belt readjusted. I had to tighten it a little bit more. I didn't get it quite tight enough the other day, but the AC is working good. And on this 97, I have the uh, slide controls unlike the ones that's got the dials 
So, I don't know if y'all can see that or not. It's kind of dark. But anyway, I didn't have to change my controls at all. This first position cuts my air on, even though it don't have the air symbol on it. So, anyway, if you have a 97TJ with that air, the, the way I did mine, you don't have to buy a different control head right here to control your air to cut your air on. It will cut on with what you have. Okay, it's been a few days since I've had the AC installed on JJ. And I have to say, it's working great. It's working fantastically. Uh, you'll notice here when I show the lines and stuff that I've lost my caps. I drove down the road with them laying here on the battery and they're gone. I got to get some more. But I have one YouTuber uh, or one guy, one subscriber asking about how everything connected. And that's what I'm going to show right now. All right. Uh, you got to have this relay right here. I'll leave a link in the description for that. And you got to have a fuse on the 97TJ uh, in F19. And, and mine is a 10 out fuse. And I thought everybody was saying a 20 out fuse, but my F19 fuse right here is a 10 out. So it has a correct fuse in it. Uh, F19, 10 out fuse, air conditioning relay goes right here. Mine had nothing right here. It already had the fuse in the, the fuse block right here. Got to have those two things. Then you got to have uh, pressure sensors. This is your high pressure pressure sensor. I got a link in the description for that. This is your cycling switch right here. You got to have those components in order for the system to work. Uh, so you got to have your condenser installed and your air compressor con installed. That's the kind of stuff explanatory. Then you got this uh, AC manifold. It's got two lines coming out of it. It's got a high pressure side that goes into the condenser and it's got the, the low pressure side. Uh, from what I understand, the, the bigger line is always your low pressure side. So, and it, there is a low pressure side that's a small line, which is right here. That's where you hook your low pressure gauges to when you get ready to juice it up with Freon. So, uh, so how you hook this thing up? Bolt your manifold down to your compressor and then the line that's got the fitting on it, the cap that would have the cap on it. It goes to the port that goes straight down and goes into the condenser. And then you have the line coming out of the condenser. This is your fluid line. And it goes all the way to right here. That's your low pressure line. It goes into the, uh, if you're standing in front of the Jeep, it goes into the right hand side of your evaporator. And then coming out of the evaporator, you have your uh, your accumulator dryer and then this pipe goes into your accumulator and it comes back out and goes into the low pressure side of your air compressor which is the other half of your AC manifold so that's how it hooks up you, you don't have many connections you'll see right here that I put some uh, some putty between these lines and zip tied them together because I didn't have really a good way to brace it and that way that 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 braces it against this line right here and it keeps them from uh, from rubbing in two so and I may uh, I may re revisit that later just to make sure that uh, I have something substantial enough in there to hold it securely and to keep those two lines from touching because if they get to touching that will rub a hole into it and I will not have cool AC anymore so that's how you install the uh, the air conditioning. I'm going to crank it up now and let's see how cold this thing gets. So starting out inside my vents, temperature is showing to be 100 degrees. I have my probe inside the center vent right there. I'm going to cut the AC on now. I'm going to put this on the second position. That's where they say you need to run it at. We'll start watching this climb down a little bit. Show you the compressor. Spinning just fine. And uh, on the second position, when it starts getting really good and cool, the compressor will start cycling on and off. If you have your fan switch on the high position, the, the, my compressor stays on all the time. So this, this compressor is really good and quiet. It don't make a lot of racket. 
I have uh, recently, since installing this, uh, had my upper oxygen sensor to go bad. And so I've got it unplugged right now. And it's, it's running just a little bit rough, but that's because I don't have the oxygen sensor working. But it runs better without it plugged up than it does with it, in, with it plugged. Uh, because it's it, it's jacked everything up. So anyway, I've got an oxygen sensor on order and I'll be putting that in soon. Let's go back in here and see what the temperature is coming down to. All right, it's down to 66 and still falling. All right, guys, I've been running for a few minutes now and the temperature is down showing uh, 45, showing 48 degrees. That's plenty cool. 43, 41. 43, 45. So, cooling very, very good. I want to kill it. So, if I choose not to, I don't have to ride with my windows down to stay cool anymore. I can leave my door shut, stay cool. All right, I told y'all I'd tell you what this cost. And I was surprised that I've got it going so cheap. This is not the price of any Freon or anything. Uh, go to Harbor Freight, get your free on for $5.99 a can, 20% off coupon on one of your cans, and you get it a little bit cheaper. Uh, no tools involved. This is just the components. This is everything minus the evaporator. I did not have to purchase an evaporator. I did not have to purchase the uh, recirculate actuator or the door. So everything I bought is under the hood, which is the dryer, all the hoses, the air compressor, and the uh, condenser, and the switches. I had bought both, I, I think I ended up paying probably, I don't know, 25, 30 bucks for those two switches. And I'll have a little bit more in it because now I gotta buy these two, <laughs> these two caps because I lost them. But anyway, my total price this is real close it may be a dollar or two under this price but i spent four hundred dollars putting ac on jj and i think it's well worth it you go online and you find the kits that they have already pre-made and they will charge you twelve hundred dollars for a kit to put on this 97 jeep right here and one thing that it comes with that i don't have they uh give you another cover for this piece right here and you peel this this uh you peel these symbols right here off it's just, just a big old sticker and you put your new sticker on and it just shows a snowflake symbol up here which i don't need i guess y'all probably noticed i got the wrong fan switch knob right there so i need to upgrade that and put a better one back on that but anyway y'all that's gonna wrap up this video that's something that jj needed and i'm proud he's got it now uh, i like my little jeep i never would have dreamed it would have turned out uh this nice just got an overall pretty decent look to me I, I really i really am proud that i went the extra mile on the paintwork because it looks really nice and shiny and flat i was hoping that it would and it turned out pretty good so anyway, I'm going to close this video out. Y'all, I appreciate y'all coming and watching this week. Uh, thank you for watching week after week. I'm over 1,500 subscribers now, and I thank y'all for that. It, it means a lot to me that y'all like my videos enough that y'all come and watch them week after week. And uh, I'll try to have something up next week. So y'all come back then, and we'll see what we got going. Thanks for watching.